Hello everybody. Sorry it's been a while. Life intrudes again. Our next camera is the Canon T60. It was introduced in 1990 uh, for export only. It was not sold in Japan. It was the last manual focus FD mount 35mm SLR by Canon. Uh, there was a manual focus uh, EOS uh, the EFM, uh, but that came later. Uh, surprisingly, the EOS system, uh, the electronic autofocus, came out with the uh, EOS 650 in 1987. So this was actually a few years later. This was also the last in the T series. It seems to have been aimed at students and for what are the reason, you know, maybe somebody's got a fantastic collection of FD lenses and their old body died or something. It was made by Cosina in Japan and this body is based on the C2 rather than the CT1 chassis which was the FM10, the OM2000, Dakota, Promaster, a million other cameras. Um, Wikipedia still says the CT1, but I'm pretty darn sure this is the C2. Uh, it's a nice little camera. Uh, some people online hate on it because it's not made by Canon and it has a plastic body, but I, I like it just fine. Um, it's aperture priority or metered manual. You set the dial to A and it's aperture priority. The aperture selection does not show anywhere in the viewfinder, uh, so you just got to rely on what you have set on the dial. It's through the lens metering, it's center weighted uh, with a, I believe it's a 50 millimeter f1.4. It'll uh, meter from EV1 to 18 at ISO 100. It's got a decent little shutter. Um, it's a vertically traveling metal shutter. In aperture priority, it goes from 8 seconds to 1 1,000th of a second. When you're set to manual, um, it goes from... Oh, Got to go the other way. The dial does not spin all the way around. I'm not crazy about that. But anyway, in manual, it goes from 1 1,000th of a second down to 1 second plus bulb. Um, ISO settings for when you're in auto prior aperture priority mode um, is from 25 to ISO 1600 and that's settable in third stop steps. Uh, it's got the little dots between the actual numbers and the manual breaks that down exactly what those speeds are. It takes two uh, 1.5 volt batteries Thankfully, it's nice common batteries, LR44, SR44. SR it does not have an intelligent shoe. Flash sync is at a 60th of a second. And in the viewfinder, the mark for 60th of a second has a little lightning bolt next to it. It's basically just there as a reminder that this is your sync speed. Uh, the viewfinder is decent. Uh, it does not have interchangeable screens or anything like that. Uh, it's 0.86 magnification. And it has 16 LEDs down the photographer's left side. It's auto to let you know you're in aperture priority mode. M for you're in manual mode. Over means it's going to be overexposed and you've got to stop down or do something because the way it's set it can't uh, take a good exposure and then the shutter speeds in full stops from a thousand to one second and then LT for long time and that's if you're in aperture priority mode and the selected shutter speed is going to be between two and eight seconds and then down at the very bottom it's got a B to remind you that you're in bulb mode uh, it has the usual split screen, it's a horizontal split, and then it has a micro prism around it and a matte field behind it. When you're in manual, which is, you know, any of the speeds away from the A and not the L for lock, um, it'll show you your selected shutter speed, and when you have press, it'll meter, and then a 
an LED above or below it will blink, showing what the metering system thinks is going to be a proper exposure. There's a self-timer. It's this button on the front. You press it, and it's good for 10 seconds. The last two seconds, it, beep, uh, it flashes. I can't remember if I said beeps or flashes. Anyway, it flashes, and it flashes faster once you're at two seconds. And to defeat it, you have press the shutter button or slide the shutter dial over to the lock position. This was usually sold with this kit lens. I did not get this with the camera. This was a different uh, thrift store find. It's a 35 to 70 millimeter f uh, 3.5 when you're at 35 and f 4.5 when you're at 70. Not super fast, but a decent little walking around kit lens. The other kit, this was sold with the FD uh, Nifty 50, the 50 millimeter f1.8. For all the hate that this thing gets online, I mean, I rather like the Cosina cameras, even though they are plastic. They're pretty tough. I mean, a lot of them have survived this long. This thing is 32 years old now, and I did not have to do a thing to it. Um, the CT1 uh, chassis versions are a little bit nicer. They go to a two thousandth of a second. But for what this is, a manual focus camera that uses the astonishing array of FD mount lenses, it works just fine. I had a blast shooting with it. Some of the images, um, I used this old Tokina 28mm uh, f2.8. This is a decent little lens. Not the sharpest, sharpest lens ever, but pretty nice for getting out wandering around. Um, I haven't been traveling or anything, so the subject matter of my test photos, not great, but, you know, this thing uh, acquitted itself just fine. I shot another roll of this hideously expired Plus X. Uh, it's 125 box speed. I've been shooting at 32. That seems about right. I've got a bunch of boxes of this. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Um, because obviously shooting at ISO 32, you cannot uh, do a lot of action photos or much with motion at all. Um, that's it for the camera. One cool thing that I found while I was playing uh, with the scans of the negatives, uh, if you take the waveform and put this little bend in it to where part of it is sloping backwards, that way only part of the image is inverted. It's not like taking your curve like this and doing that to turn a negative into a positive and vice versa. You get a solarization effect. Uh, I don't think that's right. It's called solarization, the Sabatier effect. So that was kind of cool. I'm going to play with that and do some more of that on purpose. And until then, I'll see you then.